And once again, welcome uh, to our mentor training. Adrian, I'd like to turn it over to you as the star of the show and architect of our program. Um, so take it away. Well, good morning. And I also want to thank all of you for, um, for showing up, for being here, for being willing to be a mentor. It's, um, it's a really special role. And, you know, I, it's, you know, I, having done the whole internship program at the University of Maryland for, you know, a, almost a decade, I, you know, I know the power that you can have an influence over um, the people that you mentor. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about um, how to be the best mentor. That, I think you probably already have ideas, but I'm going to talk to you about how to be the best mentor um, for someone who's just coming into the industry. Now, my history, just briefly, is I was a reporter for about 20 years, mostly in politics. I wound up my career in Washington, D.C. as a political reporter for the Arizona Republic. And then I switched to academia. Um, I ran a couple of news bureaus for the University of Maryland, um, Annapolis and Washington. And then um, I wound up my career there um, doing internships and career development. So that's where I get my, my bona fides on this, um, in case you're interested. Now, Rebecca knows, and I'm just going to share with you, I've had a few um, computer issues today, and hopefully they won't affect things. Also, technology is like the bane of my existence, but I am going to try um, to share this uh, PowerPoint with you, um, except it says I can't share my screen, Rebecca. Um, Let me double check that you should. Oh, maybe because I came in as a new host. While we're doing that, um, would it be, I'm not sure that everybody knows one another here. Would we like to do a quick roll around to make sure that we all know one another since hopefully you'll be working with each other here and there? So that certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, you know, because we'll probably have at least one or two chats with you all together just to share best practices over the course of the summer um, and see what's working for you and what's not working for you. Um, so, uh, I, you know, in, in order of my screen, Laura Walter, why don't you start with you? Sure. Um, I'm Laura Walter. I worked for 10 years at my local paper, Coastal Point, near Bethany Beach and last summer took a job as the special projects editor over at Delaware State News, and glad to be here. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Hey, Jack, how about you? Hi, guys. Um, I'm Jack Hogan. I cover county and state government for the Frederick News Post, and um, I graduated from the University of Maryland recently and spent a lot of time getting uh, mentoring from Adrian. Uh, um, <laughs> Crystal, am I saying that right? When are we it's Crystal? Um, hi, I currently work for the News Journal in Wilmington, Delaware. I am in charge of community issues, but I do a lot of trending stories, investigative stories, kind of anything that comes my way. That's awesome. Uh, how about you, Marissa? Hey, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, sometimes my headset doesn't connect to Zoom. Um, okay, so I'm Marissa. Um, I work at Bloomberg, and I'm a senior digital editor um, for automation and emerging news products. Um, and I recently just came into this role before I, that I did social media for here. And then I also um, work, worked as an environment editor when I first started here. And I actually interned through the MDDC program at the Frederick News Post, and that was my favorite internship by far. Awesome. Uh, Alex Piles, it's good to see you. Good to see you. I've missed you. I miss um, you too. <laughs> uh, so hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I was a reporter uh, and an editor most recently for the Baltimore Sun before uh, going to uh, the University of Maryland College of Journalism, where now I run the Capital News Service audience engagement team and edit investigations for the Howard Center, um, and I did my MDDC internship at the News Journal, uh, and I absolutely loved it there. So. Oh, that's awesome. Denise Rolark Barnes, I don't know if you remember, but I used to cover the District of Columbia for the Washington Times back in the dark ages of time and ran into <laughs> you on the beat a few times. So why don't you introduce yourself? 
Thank you. Uh, Denise Rollard Barnes, I'm actually publisher of the Washington Informer, but you know, I had uh, one of our uh, former editors was at Denise Barnes as well, uh, who oh, worked for the Washington Times. Yeah. And so anyway, um, yeah, I'm publisher of the Washington Informer, member of the board of MDDC. And uh, it seems like I've crossed some paths of some of you all in the past, others of you, especially Alex, at least with your, your work with the Howard Center and um, the students that are working on that, um, uh, you know, the, the, what is it, the, the history of news publishing and you, you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember the correct title. Printing hate. Printing yes, hate. Exactly. Printing hate. Yeah. hate. Right. So anyway, looking forward to this opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, I worked with the other Denise Barnes. She was my editor briefly at the Times, but I ran into you and your reporters on The Informer quite a number of times. So we're still here. Excellent. <laughs> um, let's see, is that uh, Samantha? Why don't you go next? Hi, I'm Samantha. I actually graduated from the University of Maryland in May 2021, so I'm very familiar with Adrian. Um, I currently work <laughs> at um, CNBC, where I cover markets and investing for the dot com. Um, I started there combined with an internship a little over a year and a half ago, um, did some technology reporting, some social media stuff. Before that, I did a little internship at brief internship at the Boston Globe, and I was at uh, the Daily Record for my MDDC press internship. Awesome. Stephen Overly, I haven't seen you in a while either. Yeah, it's great to see you, Adrian. Um, nice to meet everybody. I'm Stephen Overly. I'm a 2010 graduate of the University of Maryland and former adjunct faculty member. I did my MDDC internship at the Daily Record as well um, and got my start there. I'm now at Politico, um, where I will have been five years next month. Um, I currently write about global trade and economics. Um, for several years, covered um, major technology companies and their lobbying efforts in Washington. Um, and then before Politico, I spent seven years at the Washington Post as a, a tech and business reporter. We have quite a broad range of experience um, and uh, time in the business, which is a really great thing, actually. Um, you know, it seems like mentees always want someone who is pretty close to them in age. Um, and sometimes that's not the best fit for them. And then sometimes they want somebody that's like far away in age and sometimes that's not the best fit. So we have a really nice broad um, base of people to work with. And it, no matter how long you've been out of school, um, you have something to offer these um, mentees because you know they, are, they know nothing. Um, from experience, they really know nothing. They've never been in a newsroom. They really don't have any sense of what the industry is going to be like for them. So you're going to you're going to be their official handholder and chief cheerleader. And now, if I can hopefully make my slideshow work, that would be optimum. Um, so let's see if I can get that to actually share with you. Um, Yay! Always yeah. a moment of truth. I'm glad you came through. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm actually going to see if I can um, actually share just part of my screen, if that works. I don't know if it will. Yeah, so we're seeing your um, presentation view with, with your notes, so um, I don't know if that's, that's what you want, but we can see the presentation and then your next slide notes. So now you should not see my next slide notes. Um, I think you need to share your others. If you have multiple screens, this is honestly, this is what always trips me up with PowerPoint. When I have two screens, I always feel like I'm showing my seams in that way. Um, let's try that. Now we're totally just on your um, screen. Okay. Your uh, presentation screen. You're fine. Yes, that's what we want. Um, so you know, this just gives you my contact information. Um, I am here for you. That's what that means. It means that if, a, you know, if one of your mentors has a problem and you don't know what to do about it or you don't know where to turn, um, I can't guarantee you an answer, but I can guarantee you a brainstorming session in which we will sit down and discuss um, how 
you know, how we can help them solve it. Um, so I'm, I'm on call for you. This is how you reach me. This is being recorded. Um, if you need something, just call or shoot me an email. No problem. Um, so as I said, your mentoring relationship is pretty special and you probably already had mentors in your life. Um, you know, many times over the years, at least I hope you have, you know, so think about those teachers, coaches, aunts, uncles, you know, probably, you know, a million others in your life, um, I hope, um, that, you know, that have provided leadership for you. Can you remember what qualities about those people help them be good mentors for you? And anyone can chime in here if you want to just say something that helped you along the road? Any qualities that helped your mentors mentor you? I think for Encouragement, me but not always giving me the answer. Mm -hmm. That's a great start. Um, I think that's probably the A number one thing that you're going to be called upon to do. Um, so Keep that in mind, those great mentors in your life, whether they're parents, teachers, coaches, clergy, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, all of those people were your possible mentors over the years. Russell Brand, the comedian, wrote a, actually a pretty good book about mentoring. Um, he is more mentoring in, you know, he's, an, he's a, a substance abuser. So he's talking about his mentors and his road to sobriety, but um, which is kind of a little bit different than what we're doing. But he has some good things to say about what mentoring entails. Um, at the end, I've provided some resources for you. So if you want to learn a little bit more about mentoring, I've got some things there for you. And, and Russell Brand's in, uh, book is included in the list. So, so, what, so now that you have those ideas in mind about what made a successful mentor with you, um, let's talk about what all the mentoring experts say makes the best mentoring relationship. That's really just a reciprocal social exchange. It's like at its very base level. And the key word in that um, phrase is reciprocal. Okay, because what you want, so as I think maybe it may have been Marissa, I'm not sure who jumped in and said um, that they provided guide, their mentors provided guidance, but not necessarily the answer. Um, that's how you get to reciprocity. You don't talk at people. You don't um, keep talking. You don't let them have a word in edgewise. Um, that's probably the, the death of a mentoring relationship. It's got to be reciprocal. You've got to be back and forth. There's got to be two-way communication between you and your mentee. Um, and you should get something out of it. So you've already made the first step. So we want our mentors and mentees to have agency in this relationship. You know, it's not a top-down hierarchical relationship like you may be familiar with in an editorial um, hierarchy. We don't want that to happen here. Mentors should be not quite a peer relationship, but it is a two-way relationship. It should be based on respect, trust, shared values, and communication. And it also should be flexible. That means if it doesn't, if it isn't working for you at that point, you get to switch it up. You get to change things a little bit. Find a different day, a different hour, you know, a different way of talking to people, a different way of relating, you know, and you should be able to listen to your mentee and that mentee should be able to provide some clues as to what might work better for them. Um, so I don't think any of you will be bad mentors um, because as I said, you've already made the first step. You've you have agency in this relationship. You've already said, I really want to be a mentor. And moreover, mentors have helped me in the past. Um, but just for an example, bad mentors don't communicate or they communicate one way. They're talking at people. They don't commit to the relationship. So what I have found in a mentoring relationship is it, it's not something you just jump into and jump out of. You know, you're in it for the really the long haul, the whole summer, the, you know, the whole time, because 
a mentee can't predict when they need you. Okay, you know, something may, some, it's news business people, something can come up and they may need you and they may need to call and that may not be the ideal time for you. And you may have to put them off for 15 minutes or an hour or two hours, but whatever, but you are available to them in some way as often as you can be, basically. We're not making you, you know, we're not chaining you to the mentoring relationship, but we also want them to know that you have time for them. So conflicts, personality clashes often don't work. We've done our best to try to match you with people who share something in your background, whether it is um, your job description, your, um, your, uh, your demographics, your gender, your age, your, you know, whatever, your school, you know, something about you. Um, and I was going to kind of reveal all of those relationships today, but we're still kind of waiting on a couple of mentees. So I'm probably going to, just going to send you an email in the next week that will give you your match. And then um, we're going to tell your mentees on the 18th of May, and I'll go over this in a minute, um, who they are matched with. So I don't want you to reach out and contact them until after that date. But then, you know, we'll, you will have a more open relationship after that. So we don't want you to judge your mentees, okay? Kind of get that out of your head. I mean, it's, you know, this in, there are industry standards. You are expected to share those with them. Um, but that doesn't mean that you jump on them when they do something differently than you might do that. You try to be patient and explain to them why that not, may not be the wisest course of action, or you at least listen to them and nod politely and then say, hmm, have you considered this? Um, and probably the number one killer of mentoring relationships is, is mentors being so self-centered that they're not allowing breathing space for their mentee. So bear those in mind. Um, if you find yourself oversharing or saying too much, um, just be aware of these problems. Um, any questions for anyone so far? Just quickly, just jump in if you have a question, okay. Um, we do want you to be obviously good mentors. Um, and what that entails um, is a commitment to developing your protege. Um, you've taken the first step, as I said, but committing means that you are going to really help them. You know, this is, again, this is not a phone call relationship. This is not a, a brief. This is not, this is, they're going to count on you to answer their questions and help them navigate the shark-filled waters of the newsroom. Um, we want you to get to know them as people. Um, we want you to listen to them share their stories. Everybody comes from a different place and it's your job as a mentor um, to meet them where they are because everybody's going to have be coming from a different place. Okay. You know, I'm different than all of you are and yet we all seem to get along. So you have to sort of let them share your story, meet them where they are. Some of them are going to have great skills and you're going to be able to take them right up to the next level. And some of them are just going to be ba making baby steps into this industry. And it's still sort of your um, obligation to try to help them to the next step, um, no matter where they are. So provide some resources. And I'll share uh, some of my resources with you. But also, you have resources. Even if you're not thinking about it today, you know, there's a book that you read perhaps that really uh, affected how you write stories, or there is a movie that made you laugh about the industry that you want to share with your, pro your protege, um, or there is a, um, a, a news article that just had a really great lead or a particularly well-crafted piece of social media that you want to share with them because that's their job. These are resources that they can use to get better. Um, and that you can start thinking critically and evaluate how you do what you do so you can share it with them. That makes you better, actually. Make time. You know, again, I don't want you to be chained to the telephone. That's not the point. 
Um, but if your mentee says, you know, I could really, you know, meet with you a little bit more often because I'm really struggling here. Well, maybe you make arrangements to meet with them a little bit more often. Um, maybe it's, you know, phone calls after they're off deadline. So they don't, so they're not panicking um, because they're trying to make deadlines. So maybe you might have to make your phone calls on the evenings um, or a weekend. So the point is to make time that's convenient for both of you um, to try to have a mutually beneficial conversation. Um, stick to it, be in it, be in it to win it, as they say. Um, you know, that means, that means you, aren't, you aren't there for the initial conversation and then you, you ghost them or disappear or whatever. You know, that, remember the relationship is based on trust. Um, and mutually beneficial experience. Um, and if that's not happening, they're not gonna trust you. You're gonna lose their respect. Um, and then the whole relationship will go a bit south. We don't want that to happen. Um, I think this is the thing that you are called upon to do the most. You are your protege's cheerleader. You're going to teach them stuff. You will probably have at least one critical conversation with them about their work and their ability to do their job. But ultimately, you are there to encourage them and to help them find a better way to do whatever it is they're doing. Um, you're there to say, hey, that's great. I'm so glad you started that. But have you thought about this? Um, and then if they haven't, well, then you can relate it. And if they have, you can discuss. Um, remember, it's a two-way street. Uh, questions on that? Um, so I like this little quote. John Maxwell is one of those people in, you know, who writes those business self-help books. He has another very good book on mentoring called Mentoring 101. Um, and this is his encapsulated, you know, quote about how, how time is probably the most important thing that you can give to your mentee. Uh, it is the most important thing is giving them your time. So just bear that in mind. I just like to show people mentoring, you know, it just gives me that brief pause. So here's some people mentoring, enjoy. <laughs> So how, what does this look like practically? Um, what can you do to make this actually happen? You know, you know we talked about it conceptually, but um, there's some things that you can do that foster this relationship. Um, I'm gonna ask you in your first meeting with your uh, mentee in that get to know you session um, to start by setting goals for both for their internship and your relationship with them. Okay, these should be SMART goals because SMART goals are more effective than just general goals. General goals are, you know, you're gonna learn something in this internship. SMART goals are by the first month of your internship, I want you to be producing at least two stories per week um, on deadline and you know at least one of them should have multiple sources that's a really specific measurable achievable relevant and deadline oriented goal okay so when you're setting these goals for their internship but you might also say set a goal for your mentoring relationship we're going to meet 15 minutes um, after deadline for your, you know, for your three days for your first week, just to check in. Um, that's a nice specific goal. Or, you know, we are going to teach you how to do this one specific task. I'm going to show you how I, uh, how I, I'm going to use an Alex Piles example. Thank you, Alex. I'm going to show you how I check the veracity of a social media post to make sure that I can reuse that in my own um, pages with attribution. Um, so those kinds of goals for your relationship, being really specific and putting a deadline on them, 
make the best kind of goals. How do you get to these goals? Well, you're gonna spend that first conversation talking to them. Okay, what do they want to get out of this internship? You're gonna help them get there. What do they wanna get out of this mentoring relationship? They will have ideas. You will have ideas. You should share them and come up with a plan mutually that works for both of you, that has some specific steps that they and you can take to get them there. And then set a deadline. Okay, and set some check-in points. Okay, so you know we're gonna set a calendar here and in two weeks, we're gonna see how we're doing on goal number one or goal number two. Um, these kinds of specific targets throughout the internship and throughout the mentoring relationship can really help move things forward because you're both working, you're both rowing toward the same goal. Um, that's what we kind of want you to have. Um, make the goals a stretch. They will meet your expectations. That is what I find. Uh, that's what I found in teaching. The higher you set the bar, the more they will continue to stretch for that bar. Um, you, you know, they want to please you. You know, I joke all the time in, okay, I have big dogs. Typically, I have big, aggressive dogs um, that are just like puppies by the time I get done with them. Um, so training dogs and training children, I also have children, um, you know, your lessons need to have repetition. They ha should have reinforcement of those lessons and they should be two-way communications. You know, I can look at my dog and I know what he's saying to me. Um, one look. Uh, you know, my relationship with my kid is pretty two-way because he's very, very good about sharing what it is that he wants from me and what I want from him. We want you to have that same reciprocal relationship with repetition, reinforcement, and two-way communication of goals and achievements, okay? And they should be a bit of a stretch, as I said. You want them to really grow. Um, so if they can do X, you want them to reach for Y, okay? Um, oops, sorry about that. So again, um, oops. We go backwards. My PowerPoint is having a little meltdown. Okay, so I think we're here now. Um, so what you can do is incorporate some of these ideas into your, your regular meetings with your mentee. You should share your work product and they should share theirs with you. You should read and review their work, whatever type of work that, that it is that they're producing, copy editing, you know, uh, news stories, social media posts, audience engagement analytics, whatever it is your intern is doing, you're gonna just jump right in there and discuss it with them. You're gonna review it with them and you're gonna review it critically because they want your feedback. They don't want your judgment. They want your feedback. Um, that means you're gonna encourage them. Wow, that's a great start. Um, I can see you really building on this by doing this. Um, instead of saying, mm, that's not how we do it here. <laughs> so again, you're the cheerleader, but you're also someone that they're gonna turn to as uh, being able to help them reach their best, uh, best work. Share your failures. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. I talk all the time in my previous life about you know the stupid crap that I've done um, in my time in journalism. And the litany is long, really. I've had a long career of stupidity. So um, you should share yours. You should share your successes, of course. They are gonna look to you as being someone who has been in the business longer than they have, who knows stuff that they don't know. That's just automatic. Um, what they don't know is that you stumbled on the way to getting there. Um, you, to them, you are a really cool person who knows more than they do. And you need to show them that you aren't always quite as cool as you are today. Um, and that you can recover from even 
you know, a few failures along the way. You should suggest readings or videos or presentations or things that helped you. You know, every year in all of my journalism classes, I shared the SPJ uh, Quill, you know, that's their magazine, list of the top journalism movies. And then I pick my top five and discuss um, and tell them, you know, why I like this one, why I like that one. And I usually do it over a long break, uh, Christmas break, you know, spring break or something like that. And then I, you know, it's a great conversation starter when we all get back from break. Okay, who watched what movie and what did you like or dislike about it? What did you notice about the business or industry? And what were you appalled by? Because usually all these um, journalism movies have some like, really huge failing in them. Um, you know, it's reporters sleeping with sources usually drives me nuts. I'm sure you're all been there. Um, so, you know, share these things with them, discuss them because they are great conversation starters and you can both learn from these kinds of things. Anything that's helped you kind of get a handle on what the business or industry looks like. And then finally celebrate their successes. You know, I say send a trinket, you know, I don't know, you know, little tiny baby trophies. Um, I used to give my son these um, SpongeBob SquarePants erasers. You don't have to use that, but I'm just saying SpongeBob SquarePants, very big in my household. Um, anything to acknowledge their success is, is met with a smile. You know, they know that they did something good. Create, you know, create a fun certificate. You guys are all very creative people. It costs nothing to put on a screen a cute certificate that says, congratulations, you have just completed your first story and you have, you know, now have your first byline or whatever it is in the daily record. Um, you know, use every opportunity to extol your protege's good work and to show it to other people. That means use your social media accounts. Here's my mentee. My mentee did this. And then, you know, make sure you tag them. Uh, they will be grateful for your noticing them. You know, again, that's about making time for them. Uh, this slide always hates me. Um, ah, there we go. All right. There are some problems in mentoring relationships, which I am going to, again, there are bad mentors, but there are also difficult mentees. Um, I also really love this keyboard. So there you go. Uh, so I want to talk about some cautions as you go forward with your mentee. Okay. Um, while we expect your meetings to be virtual, and we do, you know, you're going to meet, if you follow my plan, at least one hour a week, you know, you can break it up into two parts or three parts or whatever works for both of you, but at least an hour a week with for the eight weeks of your um, inter interns internship, okay, your mentees internship. Um, but you can meet in person, okay? They will like that. Uh, if they have the opportunity, if you have the opportunity to meet in person, and I know you're all over the map, so this is not a requirement, but if you can, do. Just keep those meetings in public places. Meet them at a restaurant, a coffee shop, a, you know, uh, a street corner to walk around some territory, a, you know, something like that. Not in your home. Certainly your newsroom would be fun. You know, they would get a different view of another newsroom that they have never seen before. Um, it's a totally public place. If you do do a newsroom tour, do it during public hours. Okay, we want them to see and be seen um, by other people whenever you're meeting, all right? Um, don't overshare your life with your intern, okay? They don't wanna hear about your problems with your relationships with other people. They don't wanna hear you dish on your editor. Um, you know, it, editors are problematic, having been an editor and a reporter. I know editors suck. Um, they change your copy, you know, they, you know, it's okay to share a little bit of that, but really be careful about how much you are sharing about your world. Um, we are not here to push them out of the business. Um, we are not here to um, fix your relationship problems um, or theirs, frankly, uh, although we'll give them some advice. 
Um, so do be careful. Uh, keep your conversations on the business, the industry, the professional level, and remember to cheerlead a little bit. That's not to say that you're not going to share anything because I don't want you to, I don't want to, you know, put those barriers on there either. Um, you're going to have to share some of yourself with these people in order to make this mentoring relationship work. That's why this is a caution, not a do not do this. Um, just be careful of what you're saying. Try to think professionally. Finally, your protege may overshare with you. That happens. You know, boy, have I heard that in my office. Um, I usually relish those conversations because it means somebody trusts me enough with their story. And that makes me proud that they trust me. So that means they trust you. That's, this is not a bad thing. But if they are oversharing things about um, domestic abuse or threatening someone or they're self-harming or they are expressing potentially violent behavior or talking about potential violence, you need to report that, okay? Yes, this is, a, you know, you're going to have confidential conversations about their work, about their abilities, about their newsroom, about their editor. Keep those things to yourself. These things are actionable. Okay, you don't want a mentor who's having such a terrible depressive um, situation that they're threatening to kill themselves. You report that. You urge them to go to the suicide hotline and you talk to them. And if you do not know where to report something, you and I will research it together and we will figure that out. Most these, all of these interns are interns. They're at a school. Their school will have a counselor. That counselor can be uh, an assistant in this. They will have an internship office. That internship can internship assistant can help you figure out where to report this. We'll figure it out together. If that happens, please see me if you don't know what to do, okay? And it has happened to me. Um, so I want you to be aware that it does happen. It's not often, but it does happen. Any questions to this point? If I could piggyback on that, I've been part of an informal writers group where we do see that kind of language from some of the younger members from time to time. And we're also honest with them. I'm sorry you're having a bad time. I don't have the right thing to say to you or help you in this particular situation. Here are some resources, suicide hotline, et cetera. Um, like be honest that you want them to be better, but you can't always answer their questions or help them through a depressive episode, for instance. That is exactly right. You know, you, so you are a journalist. You are not a psychiatrist. You are not a sobriety sponsor. Um, you are not a therapist. Uh, you are not a suicide prevention hotline. You are not a doctor, you know, uh, we don't expect you to be, but that mentoring relationship sometimes means that people will tell you things that, you know, because they trust you. Okay, that's a good thing. And then you need to steer them in the direction of getting the help that they need from somebody who is qualified to provide it. You don't keep that to yourself. So thanks, Laura. I really appreciate that. It's good to just not have my experiences up here, but, you know, it happens all the time. Um, other, other questions or anybody else want to share? Okay. Um, so here's your practical, you know, sort of schematic for your relationship with your mentor, um, with your mentee. Um, I keep saying this. I'm just going to put it in writing. Meet with your protege an hour a week for the eight weeks of their MDDC internship. That is your entire obligation. We hope by the end of eight weeks that you have established a trust relationship with these, a mutual, mutually beneficial trust relationship with your protege um, that may continue into the future. Okay, we'd, we'd ideally like that to happen, that they could call you every once in a while and share their successes or ask your advice. That would be ideal. But your obligation is an hour a week for the eight weeks of their internship. We want you to set and discuss goals with them, goals for their, um, 
for their internship, goals for their professional improvement, goals for your mentoring relationship. You're gonna derive those goals together. I'm not gonna set a standard and say, these are your goals because this is supposed to be a conversation and not me dictating to what, what's supposed to happen. Um, you're gonna encourage their attendance at the couple of events that I'm gonna set up over the summer. We should have, and I'm gonna ask them who they'd like to hear from, but if you have some suggestions of people that I should reach out um, to meet with our interns virtually, I would be delighted for your, um, for your suggestions. Uh, I thought I'd set up one brown bag a month with somebody from the business who has, might have something to say about what they do and how they do it. Um, most of you, all of you will be invited to those sessions. Uh, they can be really helpful for, because once you get out of school, like nobody does that for you anymore. Um, so I'm going to do that for you. If you want to jump in a, in a session with somebody that I've created, please, by all means, do and then ask them questions because, again, it's a two-way street. So we're going to encourage their attendance. Um, most of them will be over a lunchtime. That's why they're called brown bag sessions. Um, you're going to check in with me at least once a month or I'm going to check in with you. Probably I will call you. We can, if it works for you, we'll set a, up a regular time and I'll check in with you to see how things are going. My check-ins will be a little more often at the beginning and a little less often at the end, but I expect to average checking in with you at least once a month just to make sure that nothing has gone awry. And these can be very short or they can be lengthy. Um, you know, whatever you need, I'm here. Um, we expect you to help us evaluate this program. At the end, I'll have a survey for you to fill out um, with plenty of room for your comments. And we're gonna take those to heart. And the next time we do this next year, when we have a new crop of interns, we're gonna incorporate your ideas. I'm gonna steal from you. Um, we're gonna incorporate all of your great ideas into our program um, and try to make it even better next year. Because again, this is our first year. We're just kind of taking our first steps toward this mentoring relationship. And while I think we have something that's gonna work, um, it can always be better. Um, I, told, I promised you some resources. Here's my resource page. Uh, these are things that I used to put together this presentation. Um, there's a few books, a few presentations. This Dale Adkins TED Talk was kind of interesting. Um, being a good mentor, um, this is a, uh, a portion of a presentation on LinkedIn. If you don't have access to LinkedIn Learning, um, you can get a free one month trial and then you can try out some of these, um, these LinkedIn Learning tools. And then finally, my friend Andrea Koppel um, piloted her Time for Coffee uh, industry conversations. She's got a whole section from journalists about how they um, manage their careers and how they got to where they are. And so you can point your mentees um, to some of these Time for Coffee episodes because I think they are pretty beneficial. Um, and that's all I have for you today. Uh, but I am open for thoughts, questions, um, you know, whatever you'd like to talk about. Have I been unclear? Go ahead, Denise, what's up? Um, I know when uh, Rebecca first mentioned this, she said that some of us might end up being mentors to people, to um, mentees who may not necessarily be working at our publications. That's correct. We actually don't want them a mentor and a mentee to work at the same place. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, what, what I, I was listening is if, you know, they would be our own interns, but I'll, I'll when I review this again, I'll listen to it. Like you said, um, that they're not a part of our staffs because, <clears throat> um, you know, just making sure that particularly if we have conversations about um, you know, what's happening on the job there <clears throat> and not knowing sort of what the um, procedures or policies are at different newsrooms, um, you know, you don't want to overstep. So that's a concern. 
I, I think that's a va valid concern. Um, I'll have to think about that in our next iteration. But what we were thinking about why we don't want them to be in the same newsroom is more me one, more mentors are better um, because the more perspectives that you have on the business or industry, hopefully the more well-rounded um, your mentee will become. Um, second of all, it gives them a safe space to share information about their newsroom that they, it, it's a far less likely to get passed on to their editors. So they are going to feel a little bit more confident turning and to you and confiding to you, knowing that it's not going to get back to their editor if they screw up. So that was oh, our thinking. Right. So the SMART goals, I guess that's where I got a little confused because if you're setting okay. smart goals but they don't I, I don't know how you set those for somebody else's newsroom so that's again that's a conversation so okay. you may you may ask them what is what's expected of them what's their intern job description uh, what's their editor asked them to do you know how do they feel about that what is the ground what is their ground floor feeling about that so how fast do they think they can produce work um what are what do, what do they think they're capable of and then you talk through a goal with them because you've been in a newsroom for i don't know how many years you know for me it's somewhere around 40 um you know at this point i think i can probably you know, fire off a couple of good goals for almost any job description. Um, and remember, you know so much more than they do. And you don't need to be kind of in their newsroom overseeing them um, to set a couple of goals for their, their internship and their relationship. It's about their growth. So these may not be, you know, produce two stories a week. These may be, you know, research, you know, how this person's career went. Um, and come back and tell me uh, how they how that's reflected in your own work. Um, you know, it could be a lot of things. You can be pretty creative about these goals. And I guess it makes sense. My last question. I guess yeah. it makes sense. Um, we'll have probably a couple of interns here at the Informer, so it's okay to sort of you know have them to network with each other as well. Is that? Fine. Absolutely. So okay. part of the purpose of the brown bag lunches is for them and all of us to sort of network together. Um, you know, I'll try to build time for questions and make sure that we have time to talk with each other. Um, so, you know, some of our brown bags may just end up being us chitty chatting about best practices. Um, so we do all want to share. Um, what works and what doesn't work. But if we have, I said it was the last question, but I just want to, <clears throat> for clarity, mm -hmm. if we have interns that are not MDDC interns, you know, would, let's say, would they be invited to those brown bags as well? Or would it just, I don't you know, networking with each other? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, that yeah. might be Rebecca's call, but, uh, you know, it, they'll be virtual. So, okay. You know, I don't think unless, you know, you're going to invite 100 interns, I think we'll have probably plenty. I of, you know, I, I, our purpose here is to get people excited about our business, you know, to be and to be better at our business, um, at the business that I hope we all really love. I mean, I love it um, and haven't stopped loving it. I've had my moments with it, but, um, you know, I think we still ultimately are pretty invested in great journalism and we want our interns to be too. So sure, I don't have any problem with them attending any event that I have scheduled for the MBDC interns. Great. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, and Anybody? just to, to jump in there, and thank you for those questions. Um, just so you all know, we are kind of big tent people. So we welcome... Uh, uh, interns that are not strictly MDDC interns to our programs. We'll also have our Into the Newsroom series this year. Actually, Alex is going to be one of our speakers, so that'll be exciting. Um, we're going to do every other week sessions, and that's open to everyone. So feel free to, to join in um, if you'd like, if, if some of the topics are of interest to you. They're open literally to everyone. Um, and so I agree with, with Adrian, the brown bags. Again, if it's useful, 
come on in. We want people to be excited about what they're doing and we want people to have a network. It's really hard when you're not physically in a newsroom sometimes to build those relationships. Um, also, I know Laura has her hand up, but I'll give one more plug. You know, our, our annual awards program is coming up the week of May 9th. Um, and we're going to have a capstone happy hour in Baltimore uh, on Friday the 13th. Come on over if you like. You know, I'm going to invite the mentees as well. Um, just, and there's no obligation, but if you want to come on out, by all means, we want you to participate as much as you'd like. So I guess Laura and then Marissa. Uh, just a quick logistics thing on the program itself. Um, are all the MDDC interns required to have a mentor or did they volunteer for the mentor element of it? So mm -hmm. we are creating this program for them. So they will, so you will be assigned an intern. If it doesn't work out, um, I'll switch some people around. Um, and the, that's why my conversations with you will be more frequent at the beginning and less at the end. Um, so if it's not working out, we'll figure something else out. But um, we did try to actually do a match. Um, they do know and will know on the 18th that they, they will have a mentor outside their newsroom to turn to who has been matched to them because of their demographics, business industry. They know about this program because we had them fill out a survey about, uh, about what they want out of a mentor. Um, most of them are pretty open. I just really want a mentor. <laughs> That's pretty much the biggest answer we got. Yeah, <laughs> please. Um, somebody to help me through the industry. So they know this is happening. They are all in. Marissa? Yeah, so I have two like really quick logistics questions as well. Are all of the interns virtual or are they sometimes are they in person? Um, just so like I know whenever I meet with them, like what I'm coming into, if they like face various difficulties or whatever from being virtual or in person. And then also are all of them reporter focused or are some of them like dabbling in social media or anything? Because I, whenever I did it, it was just reporters, but I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. Rebecca? I, they are all reporter focused, but when we, we really encourage every, um, every hosting newsroom and I'll list who's, who's hosting a, an intern this summer as well, just so you can get a sense of, of where they're all going. They all um, are going in as, as a reporter focus, but oftentimes if they want to do something, um, if they want to get experience in a certain beat in a certain area, you probably remember from your experience, your editor tries to give you some of that. So I feel like um, a couple years ago, the Baltimore Sun had a editorial page intern, which was a little unique and a little different. Um, I feel like uh, a couple years ago, the Sun had an intern that had maybe more broadcast experience and had her doing kind of like on the street kind of stuff. So I think it's really just a question of what, um, what the intern wants to do. And then um, as you all may remember, or just have experience with internships, um, the MDDC interns are treated as a, you know, straight out reporter with whatever newsroom they're in. So we have some, um, we have some, in some newsrooms that are still virtual, completely virtual. Some are completely, sorry, someone's calling me. So I'm trying to shut that down. Um, some people are completely virtual. Some people are completely in the newsroom and some are a mix. So I'm not quite sure it's, it's like ever shifting sands within the region. Um, but don't forget MDDC stands for Maryland, Delaware, and DC. Uh, so we don't have anyone specifically in DC, but we do have Delaware interns. We do have Maryland interns. So um, that's my long-winded answer to your very concise questions. Thank oh, and you. Samantha's going to go break news. Good job, Samantha. Yeah, that's a, yeah, she sent me a note. Yeah, sorry, um, but hopefully next time breaking news won't come, but I'll speak to you soon. Bye. That's okay. Breaking news happens. Go get her. <laughs> <Put her. laughs> Any other questions? Yes, um, yeah, just in terms of future communication, when will we know 
I'm sorry if I, I missed this. I'm also juggling with news. Um, when will we know who are who we're paired with? And um, you know, I this is maybe a personal thing. I got the calendar invite for this, but I haven't seen any other emails, so I don't know if I'm missing any communication. You're not no. missing any communications, which is good. We're just slow starting. Perfect. No, I just wanted to make sure, you know, I wasn't I wasn't anywhere out of the loop, but excited for this. So I have I have a list. I've matched everyone with an intern at this point, but we had two interns who were uh, kind of still joining the program. And so that may change how I divide people up. So while I was going to give you your matches today, I'm going to wait uh, about a week or so and I'll send you an email um, with all the information that I have about them and their contact information in their newsroom and a little bio about them. Um, and I will share your information with them on the 18th. And on the 18th is when um, all our interns will be have their orientation. And at that orientation, I'm hoping to put both of you together. Um, so they'll have their assignments, you'll have your assignments um, in advance, and we'll make an hour for you to just jump off on Zoom on your own to say hello and make arrangements for your first meeting, if you can book that. I don't have the hours, Rebecca. Do you have? It, um, it is. Let me double check on that. I think it's... Um... 10, and I'll invite you guys so you have the Zoom. In fact, I'll add you now. It's, I think we had reserved like a half hour around lunchtime on May 18th. But let me double check that for you. Um, yes, yeah, so let's see. Um, 11.35 to noon on the 18th. Uh, Adrian outlines the mentoring program and interns have an opportunity to meet with their mentor. Yeah, and, so it's, go ahead. And all I'll do is really just tell the mentees um, a little bit about what their obligations are. Just like I told you, it won't be anything extensive like this. Um, and then you can break off with your mentee. We'll create some Zoom rooms for you. Um, and you can just hang out with them for 15 minutes, set up your next meeting time, you know, talk about things, share, I'll share contact information, but you can share preferences and things with them in that 15, 20 minute meeting. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but hopefully you can make it. And I'm sure they'll understand if you can't. Um, if not, you're still gonna have to have an initial meeting. I can help facilitate that. Yeah. And just to clarify, um, we have a bumper crop of interns. We had uh, some great uh, grant funding that allowed us to really to expand the program. So the um, organizations that are hosting interns are the News Journal in Wilmington. So Crystal, you can represent, be nice to your, your new MDDC intern, Delaware Business Times, the Daily Record, the Afro, um, the Capital Gazette, Hagerstown, um, uh, let's see, uh, the Delaware State News, the Baltimore Sun, Coastal Point, Frederick News Post, and we're trying to find someone for the Cape Gazette, we're, uh, which is in Delaware. So those are our people. Oh, and I'm sorry, um, the Bethesda Beat, my mistake. Forgot that. So it's a mix of online, um, you know, small dailies, weeklies. It's, it's a whole... Um, it's a whole uh, uh, plethora of people. The one thing you can depend on is that they won't be in your newsroom. We just felt like it would be really, the, the, the uh, lines of communication would get really blurry if they had a mentor and a supervising editor in the same newsroom. Exactly. Um, and that's the really the whole point of the whole initial conversations because we can't tell you what, each of your interns situations are going to be. We can't give you a blanket policy. So you're gonna to have to talk to them, figure out best times, virtual meeting times, platforms, et cetera, to kind of, you know, frame it on your own terms. Okay. What other questions or worries or, or happiness, joys or sorrows that you have for us? <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I am super excited that you all are going to be our mentors this year. I'm, I am um, delighted by that we have this opportunity to have this program. Uh, we would like to see this build. We're open to feedback. As uh, Adrian has mentioned, this is our first time out for this. Our goal is really to provide a support network for our interns as they navigate newsrooms that they've never been in. Um, they all have specific goals, much as you all probably had goals when you were interns um, at whatever point that was, they do as well. And we're trying as an industry just to support these students and also make sure that they know that they're welcoming people on the other side. Um, so we're, we're making it up as we go along with you know, the expertise and experience that Adrian and each of you bring to the table. But if you're feeling like, oh gosh, I wish you would be doing this, or I think it would be helpful if we tried that, bring it on. We are really delighted to have that because that's the only way we can make a stronger program. Um, the one other thing that the students will have access to, um, we are assigning them each a coach. So um, for those of you who went through our program more recently, Tom Linthicum um, did an amazing job of being a supportive writing uh, coach so that mentors or um, interns could send him copy, he could comment on it, he could, you know, guide. Because we have 12 students, that outstrips the capacity of one stalwart individual. So we're dividing that up and um, having, I believe it's going to be four coaches to carry the load. So recognize, you know, if you feel like your intern keeps asking you to look at their copy and that's not your jam, they have a coach um, and, and certainly they have an editor as well. So make sure that you know what resources are out there. And we can help you find them. Absolutely, yes. Um, Adrian's more the expert in this area, but I'm happy to support and help you wherever I can. So with that, Adrian, do you have any, anything else you wanna add? No, I just threw something in the chat about Marissa's question about, you know, do we have audience engagement? You know, do we have a variety of interns? They're all reporting, but they, you know, I've read all their questionnaires and they all have a variety of aspirations. We have a lot of kids who are interested in sports or, or who are coming out of sports and into something else, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, we have some students who are doing print reporting who want to do broadcasting and vice versa. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. So your perspectives on everything are going to um, be interesting for them. And they may find new directions for their careers just through their conversations with you and through the other people that they come in contact with. So don't just because they're reporting doesn't mean they don't have other interests is what I'm trying to share. I'll just have a very quick anecdote. My MDDC internship, I was a business reporter, which is not a topic I had any interest in, and it became my career after the internship. So <laughs> prime example if anyone needs one. Absolutely. Um, when you share that, that's going to be very interesting for your intern. <laughs> All right. Any final thoughts, anybody? We are so happy to have you. This is going to be great. Terrific. All right. I'm going to send that meeting invite and I'll send a link to this as soon as it uh, formats. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.